So yeah, so with, uh, with Malediction, what we ended up doing was taking that central figure in Inuit Pestilence, the, the evil entity that infiltrated and influenced mankind. Okay, who is that entity? And how did he get there? So the story that we created for Savael, which is that main evil entity, was that he was the original source of evil that possessed the angel Lucifer in heaven, right? So, I mean, uh, Christianity teaches somehow that uh, Lucifer was this angel created by God who was uh, perfect in every way. And then all of a sudden, uh, something happens in his mind where he starts thinking that he's he's bigger and better than God and then God casts him out and so on and so forth. But our, our idea was, well, that doesn't surprisingly make any sense. So what if uh, Lucifer, the angel, was possessed? And if he was possessed, who the fuck possessed him? <laughs> so uh, that's kind of the, the, the background story uh, in Malediction behind the main character, Savael. So uh, what we did in Malediction was just kind of run with it. Okay, how did Savael get reawakened by mankind? And uh, what happens as a result of that awakening? You know, what's the process? How does he get back into the swing of things? So we had a lot of fun with it. I mean, Malediction, from a conceptual perspective, allowed us to be a little bit more creative lyrically. Uh, allowed us to be a little bit more cheesy, uh, actually, which was fun. Because, you know, a lot of us grew up on the old school death metal that was cheesy as shit, but amazing. And uh, so what, what we want to do is, in our own way, uh, kind of pay tribute to that. So the concept behind Malediction allowed us to do things creatively from like an artwork or merchandise perspective that uh, we, we wouldn't have been able to have done before. Allowed us to uh, experiment with some uh, interesting linguistic concepts that we uh, previously did not encounter. Uh, allowed us to be a little bit more kind of free-flowing and how we were approaching things from a lyrical perspective. So um, the concept behind Malediction really allowed us to not think about the lyrics as much because, uh, you know, it was just a, just a bullshit story, really. You know, there was nothing that needed to be said in there, necessarily. So we focused more on the music itself. And in Malediction, the one thing that you get to see that's different, in my opinion, uh, to In the Wake of Pestilence is that In the Wake of Pestilence, the raw animosity and, and, and hatred that fuels that album is in the, uh, the lyrics and in the vocals. But in Malediction, all that raw hatred is actually poured into the music. So. The things that we were doing musically, the, uh, the idea behind it, how we wrote the album, the riffs, the, the tone that we were going for, really came from that perspective. I mean, uh, the whole writing process of Malediction uh, was uh, completely wrought with um, bullshit. I mean, there's tons of drama happening at that time, tons. And there was people in the band who didn't want to be in the band, who kept around for whatever fucking reason. And there was all sorts of things happening, uh, you know, with everyone's personal lives. Everyone, you know, uh, our careers were taking off in a different way. We were traveling more. We were, you know, some people had kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things happening. So when we got together as a band, you know, it actually felt like, you know, pretty disjointed. And on top of that, you were dealing with, uh, you know, grown men who are acting like fucking children in some cases, you know, so so uh, the writing of that album when we actually did get together and decide to fucking come up with some new riffs I think a lot of it was coming out out of sheer fucking hatred, you know, just like Let's get this fucking done. So what I think is really cool is that in Malediction musically uh, What I get from it is that so 
And uh, you know, the big difference also musically on Malediction that was different than, than In the Wake of Pestilence is, is you know, how we wrote the album. Uh, you know, all of the guitar parts were written in the rehearsal room, right? So uh, the, the, the songs were written, you know, riff by riff or even, you know, full sections, you know, sometimes out of jam sessions. Um, but for the most part, everything was written uh, there in the room. Uh, so yeah, so a lot, a lot of those uh, songs uh, have a really interesting feel to them musically, and, and we're really, really happy with it. And of course, during the the, uh, the, the, the final stages of Malediction, we got Dan Rogers uh, uh, jump in on guitar and uh, and add his uh, crazy flair, uh, especially from a from a guitar solo perspective that uh, that we uh, we simply didn't have before. So with Dan jumping on board in the mix, uh, really helped pave the way for uh, uh, for that album being something that we all look back at now and, and are quite proud of. So, uh, you know, we look back at the artwork, we look back at the mix, we look back at, uh, at everything surrounding Malediction. And, uh, you know, I think for the first time in the band's history, we were all unanimously happy and proud of the product. And, uh, and, and with that, recording of Malediction wasn't even complete and we were already writing the material for inversion. So, I mean, uh, we, we kind of ran with that momentum. Uh, we took uh, that kind of approach to how we were starting to write Malediction and we applied it uh, to uh, what we were doing uh, for the writing of this album, Inversion of the Unseen Horizon.